Hello friends, welcome. In the previous video, I had already started discussing the STCW convention and I discussed the various sections which are part of the annex. And before I dive into the code, I want you to have a general outline of the STCW convention. The book has three sections. Number one is articles, which outlines the legal responsibility of a party that it requires to meet in order to comply with the convention. Party is basically a country which has enforced STCW convention into its legal system. Then the next part is Annex. And in the last video, I already discussed the eight chapters which are part of this. Now let's come to the STCW code, which specifies in more depth the technical details contained in the Annex. The code has two parts, Part A and Part B. Part A is mandatory standards of training, certification and watchkeeping. And part B as usual in most of the cases and uh, conventions is always the recommended guidelines which are not mandatory on training, certification and watchkeeping. The regulations in the annex are usually read together with the STCW code part A because the code specifically covers what all is expected from you, what all standard of competence you are expected to meet and what all certificates you are supposed to carry on board a ship. So basically STCW convention gives you the regulations on which you are supposed to comply and the code provides you additional guidelines on how you can comply with these regulations. Similar to our SOLAS which has various codes like LSA code, FSS code, supporting chapter 3 life saving appliances and chapter 2 the FSS code. Another term which is connected to the STCW convention is whitelist. So if a flag state is complying with the convention on the basis of the documentary evidence and inspection, IMO put that state in a whitelist. If a flag state is on the whitelist, it will be easier for another flag state to recognize the certificates issued. If a particular flag state is in a whitelist, it means IMO has inspected and obtained evidence that the flag state is complying with the STCW convention. It is expected that ships flying flags of countries that are not on the whitelist will be increasingly targeted by the port state control inspectors. A flag state party that is on the whitelist may as a matter of policy elect not to accept seafarers with certificates issued by non-whitelist countries for service on its ships. Before I move to the next part of the STCW code, I want you to know that there is a whitelist, greylist and blacklist also as per the port state control. If a ship is on the whitelist, that means everything is good about that particular ship and flag state. If it's on the grey list, it means when the inspections have been carried out and the ships for this particular flag states have found certain deficiencies regularly. And blacklist means you have to check this particular ship. So the ships which are on the blacklist or who are not on the whitelist as per the STCW convention, they would be targeted more. Then the next section in uh, STCW code is definitions. It gives you the definitions of all the usual ranks like master, deck officers, who is a chief mate, chief engineer officer, electrical officer, second engineer officer, assistant engineer officer, GMDSS radio operator. All these definitions are nothing extraordinary that I have to explain, which is your usual what you already have seen on the ship. Please feel free to pause and just go through any definitions that you may find interesting like uh, near coastal voyage means coastal trade or voyages from any port or place in the vicinity of a state party to the STCW convention as defined by that maritime administration of that country. India's near coastal voyages include entire Indian Ocean, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. Then there are definitions for security duties ship security officer, structured shipboard training program. Moving on to the next part, as per STCW code, there are three types of documents that are issued by the flag state under the convention. One is called certificate of competency, second is called certificate of proficiency, and third is called documentary evidence. Let's go through them what each really means. Starting with certificate of competency, as you know, Indian administration issues following certificate of competency. 
there is a officer of in charge navigational watch which is your second mate coc and further as the deck officers become senior it's first mate coc master of the foreign going vessel there is also extra master which is only available in india then there is marine engineer officer class 4 which is for your fourth engineer then as he progresses with his sea time and examinations there is class 2 and class 1 for the chief engineer then also only in india there is extra first class engineer then there is electro technical officer basically a eto but these are then there is marine engineer officer class 3 Second engineer officer limited to three thousand kilowatt. Marine engineer officer class three, which is chief engineer officer limited to three thousand kilowatt. And finally, marine engineer officer class four near coastal voyages. It is also interesting to note that GMDSS, Global Maritime Distress and Safety System Radio Operator, is also a certificate of competency, which is included for deck officer's certificate. a person with only gmdss certificate can work as a radio operator gmdss competency is thus included in second mate first mate and masters certificate of competency then the next section of the stcw code covers the certificates required for near coastal voyages so for chief mate master officer in charge for different sizes of ships is provided in this section so i hope the pattern is so far very clear that if you want to work as a certain rank then you need a certificate of competency for that particular rank now let's see in this slide what is the difference between a certificate of proficiency and a certificate of competency so a certificate of proficiency may be issued for rating forming a part of navigational watch able seafarer deck rating forming a part of the engine room watch able seafarer engine electro technical rating officer on oil tanker officer on chemical tanker officer on liquefied gas tanker rating on oil tanker rating on chemical tanker rating on liquefied gas tanker proficiency in survival craft and rescue boats other than fast rescue boat proficiency in fast rescue boats advanced fire fighting medical first aid medical care security awareness training seafarer with designated security duties and ship security officer so i think after going through all these uh, certificate of proficiencies the pattern is a bit clear if you want to sail as an officer then you need certificate of competency but you want to become an officer on a particular ship you need to be proficient for that particular ship like it may be an oil tanker chemical tanker gas tanker and a deck rating may not require a certificate of competency but he does require a certificate of proficiency and there are other certificates like medical first aid medical care all these certificates depending on your rank on the ship you should be proficient to handle such matters moving on to the next section is documentary evidence this section contains certificates which are also required but Let's go through them to understand what is the difference between the last two and this one. Basic safety modular courses, personal survival technique, personal safety and social responsibility, elementary first aid, basic fire prevention and fire fighting, crowd management training, safety training for personnel providing direct services to the passengers in passenger spaces, crisis management and human behavior training. passenger safety cargo safety and hull integrity training so as it's very clear now documentary evidence is for the basic modular courses these are the courses which cannot be avoided if you are going to a ship you need to know all these things to stay on the ship safely like if you are on a passenger ship then you have to undergo this particular minimum training of crowd management knowing how the people will react etc and etc now that we have gone through the different certificates it's time we identify the levels of certificate there are three levels first is support level which means the level of responsibility associated with performing assigned task duties or responsibilities on board a sea going ship 
under the direction of an individual serving in the operational or management level so basically support level is for people who will be working under the guidance of the officers which is basically your junior officers third officer second officer or under the management level officers master chief mate chief engineer second engineer then the next is operational level it means your officers the junior officers who have a certain machinery or like life saving appliances fire fighting appliances under their direct control but they are working as per a proper procedure and under the direction of senior management officers like chief officer or second engineer so these officers have the operational level of competency certificates and finally the top management level it means the level of responsibility associated with serving as master chief mate chief engineer or second engineer officer on board a sea going ship and this ensures that all the functions within the designated area of responsibility are properly performed now when we go for the exams we have some functions which we have to clear like in deck side there is function 1 navigation function 2 cargo handling and stowage function 3 control operation of the ship and care of persons on board function 4 radio communication gmdss similarly for engineering department there is function 1 which is marine engineering function 2 is electrical electronic and control engineering function 3 is maintenance and repair function 4 is controlling operations of ship and care of persons on board so now you know that when you are giving all these exams and you have to clear all these functions the source of these competencies who is deciding that you need to be competent to this level is decided by the stcw code and it gives clear indication what all do you need to know in all these sections and finally i'll end this video with the stcw 2010 amendments the basic points so 2010 has brought a lot of changes it brought certain changes in order to improve on the issuance of certificate of competency to uh, prevent any fraudulent practices then there was a revision in the requirements of hours of work and rest there was new certification requirement for able seafarers and as you know with the advent of egdes the new modern training has come related to the egdes training the new requirements for the marine environment awareness training training in leadership and teamwork there were new training requirements and certification requirement for the electro technical officer there was updating of competency requirement for personnel serving on board all types of tankers including new requirements for personnel serving on liquefied gas tankers new requirement for security training as well as provisions to ensure that seafarers are properly trained to cope if the ship comes under attack by pirates then there was introduction to modern training methodology including distance learning and web based learning new training guidance for personnel serving on board ships operating in polar water new training guidance for ship personnel operating dynamic positioning system so finally i'll end this video with a bit of additional clarification for the new officers so if you hold an indian certificate of competency and then go and work on a foreign flag vessel your certificate is usually endorsed by that particular flag state however if you have a certificate from another country recognized by our administration still you will not be given endorsement unless you complete a course covering the difference between the two syllabus the reason is that indian standard is considered much higher than the stcw standard so if you do your second mate exam in uk then you will not be allowed to give the chief mate exam in india because the entry level in india is much higher than uk even though most of the countries are in white list indian administration does not recognize these certificates of many countries so finally if you have the indian certificate then it's very easy for you to get the endorsement and sail on any flag vessel however if you hold the certificate of competency from any other country then you will not be able to sail on indian flag vessels which is currently not a very big disadvantage but certainly it's easier to renew the certificates in india if you are indian certificate holder ultimately it's your choice
I hope this was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comment, then please do write down below. All the best for your exams. And as always, thank you for watching.